Hello folks, and uh, welcome to a somewhat belated, but still hopefully rather quite entertaining calculator video. Now, as always, whenever I say entertaining calculator video, I feel like it's going to be, uh, what do you say, oxymoron, but I, I don't know, I find these things fun regardless. Today, we have our good friend the uh, Heyman Automat S with us and um, I mentioned during my last video that it has something strange going on where the motor will start running on its own while it's um, plugged in. So that to me makes me think that there is something afoot with the um, either the power supply or the switch. Perhaps there's some grime or dirt in there, or maybe something has gotten bent, who knows? But today we're going to have a look at it. So, without further ado, let me open it up. Or flip it open. I think that the uh, best way to attack this would be to uh, Take out the screws in the bottom here. Maybe you'll be able to see it. There is one here. There is one the far down here, here, and up in this corner. So let's just get cracking, shall we? Now for this job I was considering uh, well, I'm just going to use the plain old ratcheting screwdriver that I've been using for quite some time now. Um, looks like a big old flathead, so something like, yeah, this this should be big enough. It's a, um, what does he say, CRV7. So, I'll just pop that in the screwdriver. And it should come out no real massive fuss, I don't think. Yeah. Very little fuss, actually. Oop. I would like to perhaps be a little bit more gentle on it. Let's see. Hmm. And the rest, I think it should come out by, yeah, it comes out by hand, no problem. Hopefully I can avoid having to um, take out the um, screws on the feet. That would, that would help. Oh, oh my. This is a long screw, I think. Hmm. Interesting. Next up, we have our good old friend, the screw at the top left. So let's get him out. These actually come out surprisingly easily for presumably having sat there for some time. Or maybe, just maybe, the person, yep, yeah, another long one. Maybe the person who sold it is actually um, done us a good favor and um, decided to clean the thing out for me. That would be nice. Or maybe they messed something up in the process, who knows? We'll find out. This, uh, this guy down here at the bottom, so shouldn't be any trouble. Something is starting to come loose now, so that's a good, uh, good sign. I think it's out. Yes, it is. It's just kept under some tension. Yeah, they're all the same, I think. And of course, final guy. With 
this last screw removed? I think... Yeah, that's not... That's not in the thread anymore. And out she comes. So, let me just take a moment to tip it back over. Right, oh, so there's some headway. Looks like the cover might come off. Let's try and lift it. Yep. It's catching a bit, but perhaps if I press this down, I might be able to pivot it over. Um, hmm. Right, this little lever has decided it's going to be a pain. So close and yet so far. But I think that should be an easy fix because the uh, front plate here is um, definitely a good contender for chief suspect. So, better grab some. Uh, Smaller, uh, smaller flatheads to deal with that. I'm fairly sure that these ones, if I just eyeball, they look, they look two sizes smaller. So a uh, V5 might do the trick. Suspect it might. No, not quite. Not quite. V4 perhaps. Let's have a look. Yeah, V4 does it. I'll just try and shove the, uh, shove the thing back in place a bit so it doesn't put a bunch of pressure on the clearing button. No sense in being needlessly brutal to it after all. So let's try and get this, get this out. a little um, huh that's interesting looks like well for one it looks like it's stuck to the bit but let's see if we can we can get a better look at it so if I just focus you know you want to there we go yeah there's a little uh, plastic washer on it so that's um, that's interesting. Maybe it's a uh, vibration thing. Who knows? I'll try and get the get the screw to come off. No problem whatsoever. So I'll just get the next one while I'm at it. Man, I gotta say, doing mechanic stuff for a camera it's um, it's a lot trickier than just doing it by myself. Then again, on the other hand. I love showing these machines off. They're, they're gorgeous devices and they certainly deserve the attention. And hey presto, the faceplate comes off. Good looking little thing. So, I can stay over there. And now, now we prepare for the grand unveiling. So. Oh, hey. Oh, yes, yeah, straight up. That's the ticket. Oh, boy. And if you look at the insides, well, it's a bit, a bit messy. It's a bit dark, too. But you'll see that there is not much light. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's the spirit. And now you'll see there's a bunch of foam in here that's supposed to suppress the noise. So let's, uh, let's have a look at the machine. Right, so over here we seem to be having the uh, main transmission of the, uh, of the calculator. We have the, uh, the big electric motor coming across here with the main pin and then a gearbox. That transmits power to the uh, main 
main drive. So this right here is the uh, little socket that the maintenance key slots into. So if I grab that key, that I now have misplaced completely. The day has been saved. The maintenance key is fine. So I just slot that in there. And if I do a very simple, just a clearing, see when I press the M button, there's a little thing that releases there. And the little lock slots back into place. You'll see. I put the key in, give it a turn, and the clearing is done. Now, what I find myself asking though is why does the motor not run? Or why does the motor run too much, rather, which is the problem I'm having. So, Without further ado, we have to have a look at the back of the thing. Incidentally, here's the cat. She's a quality cat, I think. Also quite sociable. Likes to come out and say hello. And get him scratched behind the ear, as she does. But let's get back to it. All right, so this is the uh, motor itself. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with it. We have well a big blobby doodad here. Which I'm not sure, maybe it's covering up the uh, motor governor or something. We have a ceramic device here of some description with the text GWS50 on it that I'm not sure what the purpose is to be honest. And well, moving onwards, I've always said that my problems with uh, messing about with the uh, electromechanical calculators is that I just plain don't, uh, don't get electronics all that well. Well, looks like 250 volts AC at 0 0.02 picofarads. I gotta say, it looks like they've made this machine so that it'll handle two different kinds of uh, voltages. You have your 100 to uh, 155 and your 160 to 240. And I believe that the machine has been set up to the 240 mark, but we're going to have a little look underneath. So I'll just have to lift it real quick. Now let's have a look. This is a heavy thing, but I know that the uh, bottom cover oop, is actually disconnected from the machine housing at large. So. I just get a good grip, I should be able to lift it straight off. So first of all, I am going to twist it a little bit so I have more, more space to work on. And then I can grab here. And there we go. Oops, attached some. Oh, it's attached by a grounding wire. That does make sense. And also it's uh, quite reassuring to be honest. I'm gonna... I'm going to very very gently unscrew it. Let's see if you can see it. I'll be sure to put it back after. Let's see here. Incidentally, I believe that the background noise you might be hearing is a cat fighting a thing of twine. As, as she does. And that, yeah, that came off plain and simple. So, let's... Boop. Let's make a mess of everything, shall we? 
Aha, uh -huh, yep. Here's the villain. This little doodad. A piece of slightly sticky plastic is the um, a clear symptom of what has been causing the machine to misbehave. Now, I had this issue with another machine as well. Presumably, this was something that happened before this machine came here. Let's have a look, shall we? This looks like it's some description of motor run capacitor. It looks to me like uh, it supplies three phase to the uh, to the motor itself, and that's all well and good. But it's an old capacitor, probably electrolytic, and that means that they can dry out. And if they dry out, some, or if they're old, dry out, go shonky, whatever. Some fun things can happen. Fun things in this case being some manner of explosion. And so, the side here, right here, has blown out. And this most likely causes something that shouldn't be conducting to actually conduct electricity, thereby making the motor run uncontrollably and uh, emitting an un unpleasant smell. Fortunately, I don't believe that the motor itself should have been damaged from this because it hasn't been it has been running very fine and it hasn't randomly stopped and emitted magic smoke so i think this is salvageable if i can only replace that one capacitor so unfortunately i'm not an electrician i don't have the part on hand and so that'll have to be an adventure for another time which I know, terribly disappointing, but once this thing is in action, you'll see it in a whole new light. With that being said, I guess I'd better put it back together the way it was, so that uh, future generations won't feel like my apartment is an unclean mess. So step one should be getting the um, getting the grounding cable back into place. So I'll just put on this screw so it can act as a bit of a guide for the terminal. Then I'll see here. Let's see. I must move the machine body itself a little bit just so that it's the right distance then slot the yeah there there we go slot the ground wire in there let's see if we can screw this in it's better to screw something in than to screw it up i find Even though I just said that, of course, I couldn't really manage to not screw it up. I feel like we've watched this video before, which is yours truly trying being a horrible clumsy oaf when it comes to getting screws back where they belong. I think that's an unfortunate fact of life really where taking something apart is infinitely easier than putting it back together. And I think that if we all strive to keep this in mind, perhaps we can all be a little bit more careful so that we can go about our days without unscrewing things you can't put, screw back in again especially uh, especially not something that one might actually argue is quite important like uh, like a grounding wire 
I, for one, can safely say that I would be most unhappy to uh, inadvertently turn into a set of Christmas lights while doing this. Which I guess is partially why I'm so fussy around these uh, the capacitors. I've heard the horror stories about what CRTs do to people and I'm under no illusion that uh, an electric motor wouldn't do the same. Next step is going to be quite plain and simple, it's just getting the outer casing back on. So, move that to unlock the carriage and then the casing should just slide, slide on. This is probably the easiest casing to remove in all of my casing removal, casing removal days. Yeah, that does the carriage slide free. Yeah, it'll do. It'll do nicely. Next up, the uh, display plate here with the uh, what should I say? The, the key. And that one is just a couple of tiny little screws. Nothing to write home about, or anywhere else for that matter. So, come on now. Having said that, of course, the thing took offense at my hubris and has now elected to make this as much of a pain as it possibly can. As they do. Oh, I think I understand the purpose of those washers now as well. It's probably so that when you're putting in the screw it doesn't actually uh, mess up the paint. That would make some sense. And the other one as well. So, hopefully that one is a little bit easier, but again, I am under no illusion of easiness whatsoever. And, hey presto, come on. So, what do, what do we think? Does that count as the first try? Because, you know, I think that was the first try. tighten it this is not this is not a part that's um, terribly liable to make an escape so goodness me I guess asking for torques is a bit much. Although at the same time I think I understand why they would use flatheads because a flathead looks a lot nicer uh, when it's on the surface of a, of a device. A, um, a Torx looks a bit eh, I think. Either way, time to put in the bottom screws. So I just hold it together. And they are equally long, aren't they? So I know that they did go in. I think they are. Oh. <laughs> nope. They are not. So, put in a shorty here. Yeah, shorty seems to be a lot more in his element. And I 
know what you're thinking. Look at this. Look at this goof is can't put in a screw right. As he does. I have to admit this was um, rather disappointing for me. I was I was hoping there would be some gunk in a uh, capacitor or in a switch that I could fix. But now we're actually looking at replacing a part. A part that I'm not entirely sure how to find it that. So, that poses some problems. Also, I am not an electrician. Not even slightly. So, even if I found the right part and I replaced it, I'm not entirely sure I'd be confident enough in the results to feel safe using the machine after all was uh, said and done. Likely. Yeah, that's the spirit. Oh, hey. There we go. Glad I have the maintenance key though. That really does help a lot in making it work as it should. Now, now we're doing it. Now we're doing it. Yeah. And so, final one should be quick. No, it was a disappointment for for you and most likely for me. Hoping we'd get this thing running today, but we'll see. Never say never, after all. I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you leave a like, a comment. If you're into this kind of thing, or if you're into watching fellows playing video games, then by all means, please do feel free to uh, leave a subscribe and. Again, thank you very much for watching. Have a lovely day.